Hi, okay, this is Karen Meany, and it is my pleasure to introduce Sue Cass this evening. Um, Sue has some incredible accomplishments in conservation and education. She has been with Boulder County Nature Association for 21 years and with the Raptor Monitoring Program for 21 years. And we all know the incredible value of these long-term studies and long-term consistency and in institutional knowledge. She, the Burrowing Owl program she's going to talk about, she's been involved with that for 10 years. Um, in addition, she has received the Boulder County Parks and Open Space Stewardship Award and Boulder County Audubon Society Conservation Award. Uh, more personally, her husband's family came here in the 1860s to mine by Salina here in the foothills. I think we all know that town. And then she herself came in 1961 and is just supremely grateful and appreciative to be here, as many of us are, and with folks who share her interests. So with that, I'll turn it back to you, Sue. Okay, thank you. Um, now is um, the uh, um, sidebar with all the uh, participants, is that blocking your screen? No. Okay, it is blocking mine. How do I uh, get rid of that? Uh, if you put your cursor between your, are you, um, put your cursor between yourself and the, your, the pictures and the slide, and then push it off to the right. You'll oh, see mine. Now, now I'm, okay, I'm just going to put that there. Okay. Okay, hold on. Now I'm going back. Okay. Okay, well, thank you all for the invitation. Um, I appreciate it very much. Uh, and um, the uh, Burring Owl um, uh, survey effort has been ongoing since the year uh, 2000. Um, Burring Owl um, were historically uh, um, a common breeder in Boulder County. In 1909, Junius Henderson, founder of the and first curator of the University of Colorado Museum of Natural History, declared Burring Owl our most abundant owl on the plains. Today, Burring Owl is classified as a Boulder County avian species of special concern, a rare to uncommon breeder, and was actually believed extirpated from the county in the late 1990s. Burring Owl is considered a national bird of concern and is the only North American bird of prey that nests exclusively underground. Okay, in 2008, Boulder County Parks and Open Space and the City of Boulder Open Space and Mountain Parks partnered in a joint study of declining burring owl populations in Boulder County. The purpose of this study uh, was to uh, locate burring owl nests uh, in prairie dog colonies uh, determine the rate of nesting success and devise strategies for protecting and enhancing nesting areas on city and county open space. The city and county devised different strategies to implement the study. OSMP monitors for burring owl nesting activity on city owned lands entirely with staff. BCOS, uh, BCPOS uh, does their monitoring uh, through BCAS and BCNA uh, recruiting and training volunteers to monitor its sizable holdings. Uh, the burring owl monitoring uh, uh, goes on, uh, goes through a comprehensive, or burring owl monitors go through a comprehensive training, which includes uh, BCPOS volunteer policies and procedures, BCPOS sensitive data policy, wildlife viewing and wildlife photography ethics, Burrowing Owl Monitoring Protocol, Burrowing Owl ID and Breeding Biology, and Boulder County Avian Species of Special Concern. In addition to monitoring their assigned properties for burrowing owls, volunteers are asked to report all observed birds of prey, their behavior and nest locations, all observed Boulder County avian species of special concern, mammalian predators, uh, both wild and domestic, and illicit human behavior. 
And keep in mind, a significant amount of brewing owl monitoring occurs on large leased county owned agricultural properties that are closed to the public. Okay, at the close of each season, the comprehensive brewing owl monitoring summary is published uh, uh, within BCPOS sensitive data reporting uh, policy. Uh, brewing owl, uh, the policy DBO report um, uh, details the brewing owl nest observations, uh, bird species, including raptors and avian species of special concern and other wildlife observed, uh, other observations and disturbances and contains a complete data compilation. Uh, okay, oh, I see, we're admitting individuals. Okay, uh, the first recorded burring owl observation in the region occurred 200 years ago. Um, uh, Edwin James, uh, a, a, a physician and botanist with the Major Stephen Herman Long Expedition in 1820 uh, wrote in his journal, this fellow citizen of the prairie dog, unlike its grave and recluse congeners, is of a social disposition and does not retire from the light of the sun, but endures the strongest midday glare of that luminary and is in all respects a diurnal bird. Uh, Edwin James' declaration uh, of the uh, burring owl to be a uh, diurnal bird was surprisingly prescient and prophetic, as we will discover. Okay, I went backwards. What happened here? I'm sorry. Okay. Um, the evolution. Uh, through an adaptive radiation of silent flight in owls. Owls that hunt primarily at night have evolved serrated feather edges that allow air to flow smoothly through the indentations and soft down feathered wing surfaces that provide, provide for buoyant silent flight. Silent flight serves two uh, purposes. It does not alert prey to an approaching predator and it does not override or interfere with the owl specialized hearing. Adaptive radiation in evolutionary biology is defined as a process by which organisms diversify rapidly from an ancestral species into a multitude of new forms, particularly when a change in the environment makes new resources available or opens new environmental niches. Starting with a recent single ancestor, the process results in speciation and phenotypic adaptation variation resulting from both genetic and environmental influences of an array of species exhibiting different morphological and physiological traits. Darwin's finches, recently determined through DNA research to have evolved from tanagers, not finches, are a well-known example of adaptive radiation. The evolution of flight in birds opened new avenues for evolution to explore initiating an ad adaptive radiation on a grand scale. Okay, here we have Eastern screech owl with prey, a mouse. Uh, and I want you to note the zygodactyl uh, toes and talons, uh, two toes forward, two toes back, common in owl species. Specialized hearing in owls provides the ability to accurately triangulate sound location in the dark. The mechanisms ranging in degree from simple asymmetrical ear openings manifest in skin and feathers in great horned owl to grotesque malformation of the skull, the skull in boreal owl. Triangulation is achieved with a perceived variance as small as two one hundredths of a second. Okay. Uh, modern science has determined that burring owl has no specialized hearing. As a consequence, has conventional feathers and is, in all respects, a diurnal bird.
Okay, I'm blocking my screen. Okay, here we go. Um, okay. Sorry. Um, the image on the uh, um, left um, is the owl is holding a checkered garter snake. Uh, which um, it is only found on the Eastern Plains. Uh, we typically don't see these here uh, in our area. Okay, Burring Owl's presence uh, uh, in this region long preceded the exploration uh, of European descendants. The oldest owl fossil ever discovered was the femur of a Burring Owl predecessor, discovered near Tiffany, La Plata County, Colorado in 1916 and placed in the genus Ogigoptinx that dates to the Paleocene era. Ogigoptinx is part of a larger set of fossils referred to as the Tiffanian fauna relative to the Tiffanian North American stage. When I read about this discovery several years ago, Alan and I made a pilgrimage to the tiny hamlet of Tiffany to absorb the ge geologic significance of the area, which sadly was permeated by massive oil and gas drilling operations, a different indicator of the geologic sign significance of the area. For 91 years, Ogigoptinx was a genus uh, without a species, uh, but that changed in 2007 when complete fossil remains later designated Ogigoptinx wetmorii were discovered in the Bridger Formation in Southwest Wyoming. And guess what? The well-preserved skull exhibits a strong supraorbital ridge, the bony overhang that shades and protects the eye common in modern hawks and diurnal owls suggesting that Ogigoptinx was in all respects a diurnal bird from the get-go. Burring owl, Athene conicularia. Uh, Burring owl, a tiny owl that fits nicely in the palm of your hand and the nine to 11 inches includes Burring owl's long legs, atypical of most owls. There are two subspecies of burring owl in North America, Floridana and Hypugia, the subspecies that nests in Boulder County. Only a subset of the subspecies Hypugia migrates. All other North American burring owls are sedentary and unlike the sedentary population, the migratory subset typically does not form long-term pair bonds. In theory, a burring owl is capable of excavating its own burrow. Uh, the subspecies Floridana does it all the time, but that has never been observed in Boulder County. A few years ago, uh, Steve Jones and I were participating in a post-season consult with county staff. And I asked Steve if there had ever been a recorded burring owl nest in Boulder County in anything other than a prairie dog burrow. Uh, Steve replied in the negative, and I suspect that was the case across much of the, reason, the region. And it makes perfect sense. Why waste time and energy excavating a burrow, burrowing owl, when you can borrow one rent-free instead? Black-tailed prairie dog, Sinemus ludovicianus. The generic epithet Sinemus translates to the little minor and the specific epithet to of or pertaining to Louisiana, not the state, the purchase. As I suspect you have encountered, several plant and animal species share the same specific epithet resulting from early exploration of the vast area known as the Louisiana purchase which included all of Boulder County since a significant portion of the Western boundary traced the continental divide. And at 828,000 square miles, the transaction was the largest single land acquisition in US history. 
But of course, what the United States actually purchased wasn't land. It was the preemptive right to obtain Native American lands by treaty or conquest to the exclusion of other colonial powers. The prairie dog is a keystone species that is connected to a disproportionately large number of species in the food web, a species that maintains the organization and structure of entire communities. The loss of a keystone species results in a range of cascading effects that alters trophic dynamics and other food web connections and can cause the extinction of other species. A keystone engineer. Prairie dogs are profoundly important in driving plant succession. By bringing subsoil to the surface, prairie dogs influence soil structure, soil chemistry, and micro topography. Their burrows are a third habitat dimension in a largely two dimensional environment providing habitat to 150 to 200 symbionts, predators, competitors, and commensals. Commensal, a species in a symbiotic relationship with another dissimilar species in which one benefits and the other is essentially unaffected. Blackfoot, black-footed ferret is a critically endangered species that is a fierce predator of prairie dogs. BCPOS is the largest supplier of prairie dogs to the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service Blackfooted Ferret Conservation Center near Carr, Colorado. That facility houses 60 to 70 percent of the entire captive blackfooted ferret population. The migratory subset of burrowing owls display strong fidelity to their natal area in which they typically return each year to breed. Yearlings are capable of reproducing but are rarely successful. Males arrive in Boulder County in late March to early April, slightly ahead of females or already paired. The territorial defense and preparation of the, bur the burrow begins immediately. Whitewash on a bur burrow entrance may indicate the presence of owls. Okay, males call from raised purchase, perches, a beautifully backlit burrowing owl on a mullen stalk near Cherry Creek State Park, and courtship commences. Allo preening frequently occurs in sexually monomorphic species, species where the sexes closely resemble each other, creating the possibility of non recognition on first encounter. Allo preening. Uh, often solic is often solicited by males, which may be a submissive display by dominant birds, indicating the likelihood of non-aggressive behavior. Our previous caution about the difficulty sexing burrowing owls uh, is borne out in this Rob Curtis photo. Copulation occurs. Whoops. Sorry. Uh, eggs are laid at the rate of one a day until the clutch is complete and they hatch asynchronously in the order and interval laid. Asynchronous hatching, uh, common in raptoral, raptorial birds, is determined by the onset of incubation with the laying of the first egg. Eggs hatch in the order and interval laid. Larger, more aggressive young, typically the first to hatch, can outcompete smaller siblings when prey is in short supply. This is a brood redu reduction strategy that assures survival of fewer, stronger young in times of low prey availability.
while the female incubates uh, typically you know, 20, 30, 28 to 30 days and broods the young, the male provides food and defends and protects the nest. Uh, burrowing owls often distribute dung near the burrow entrance. Uh, this is done for two reasons, uh, to mask the scent of the nest and young and to attract insects, a favored prey. Here, a burrowing owl with prey, a cicada killer, uh, one of North America's largest wasps, typically found in southeastern Colorado. The young may appear above ground around three weeks of age in Colorado, typically in early to mid-June. Uh, brood size ranges from one to 12 across all subspecies and averages from one to nine. Herein lies our problem here in Boulder County. Brood size in Boulder County averages 2.6 per attempt, currently too low to maintain a viable population due to high mortality rates for young, inexperienced birds. It's believed uh, that as many as half of all birds of prey uh, that fledge subsequently die in their first year. Incomplete feather growth and developing flight skills leave birds susceptible to predation and exposure. And inexperience combined with relative uh, prey abundance and density can lead to starvation. Compounding this scenario, the adult burring owls depart the area in advance of the fledglings, uh, at which time they are correctly classified as fully emancipated, emancipated juveniles, uh, which must migrate independently to the wintering grounds without ever having made that journey before. Um, this, in, this is another uh, peril that our young burring owls go through. And then we have the attention grabbing anomaly presented by the back to back 2018 2019 seasons. While the number of active nests observed in 2018, 10, was slightly higher than the previous year's high of seven, the number of fledged young, 31, was nearly doubled the previous year's high of 16. Uh, indicative of a new trend, we thought, or so we hoped. Uh, needless to say, the 2019 survey results uh, left us disappointed and scratching our heads. In this graph, seasonal fluctuations are mirrored on OSMP properties uh, with nest and fledgling accounts slightly higher on OS OSMP tracks. And as you can see here, OSMP had an equally attention grabbing experience in 2018 29, or 2019 rather. I uh, reached out to Will Keeley with OSMP. Um, uh, and to my guiding light at BCP BCPOS, Michelle Durant, and my mentor and fellow Burring Owl Survey supporter, Steve Jones, for insight, which unfortunately is in short supply. Steve offered a hypothesis regarding recent increases in Burring Owl numbers in the area, resulting from large scale fracking and oil and gas operations in Weld County and other areas to our east that have followed. Uh, that have left fallow large tracts of ag land, opening them to expanded prairie dog activity. But that doesn't address the nosedive. The most important information we need regarding the 2018-2019 anomaly are conditions on the wintering grounds and the migration path that could have disaster impacts on our migratory burring owl population. What we do know uh, is 2018 and 2019 were the second and third warmest on record, respectively, and the area was coming out of protracted drought. What influence, if any, that had on burring owls is uncertain. We'll stay on it as we prep for the 2021 burring owl nesting season.
any questions we uh, should be asking ourselves and, and questions we should be asking ourselves as we move forward. Will we ever get to the point where artificial burrows are our only or best option uh, as they have in other regions? Should we be experimenting with that option on suitable tracks now? Can prairie dog breeding and feeding ecology be accommodated on open space adjacent to the urban agricultural interface? Uh, many of us have the disconcerting uh, notion that prairie dogs are rampant and pervasive when in reality, black-tailed prairie dog has been purged from 99% of its historic range. As we contemplate, it behooves us to remember we are the invasive non-native species in this realm. In closing, I want to express my gratitude for the opportunity to participate in this important open-ended research project and to share this very appropriate 2020 Audubon Society uh, photo award. Uh, thank you, Burrowing Owls. And, if, and Chris, if, uh, we'll take, uh, Sue will take some questions. If you could type them into the chat box, that would be great. Just uh, type in the questions to everyone. And the first question we have is, uh, how are burrowing owls affected by the plague? Um, I don't have any information on that. Uh, we have had no uh, um, issues with that here in the county, uh, of course. Um, so uh, that is something that I, 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 I can't answer, I'm sorry. Okay, do you know where the Andrew Lee's photo was taken? The one at the end? Uh, yes, it was, I, it was taken in California. Uh, I, don't remember, <laughs> I don't remember it, it, the town. I think it was near Oakland, California. Okay. And how can anyone become a burrowing owl monitor volunteer? Um, well, um, we're going to be doing a training uh, in the spring, um, at, uh, probably uh, uh, similar to this uh, <laughs> uh, program. Um, we have not taken uh, too many new burrowing owl surveyors on. The interesting thing about it is the burrowing owl surveyors who signed on at the beginning are still with us uh, and um, have been for a long period of time. I know I signed on in the first year of the uh, uh, survey uh, and after Steve asked me to take over the um, volunteer coordination uh, in uh, the, the next year. Um, so uh, I think uh, if, there, if you're interested and want to do this, um, contact me uh, and I will um, share that information with uh, the, uh, uh, Michelle Durant uh, at Boulder County Parks and Open Space. She's in charge of this program. Okay, the next question is Boulder County Parks and Open Space do any banding of fledglings uh, or monitoring of travel uh, to and from wintering grounds? They do not. They don't. Okay. Do individuals return to the exact boroughs <clears throat> they have used previously or just the same general area? Uh, typically the same general area. It could be the same borough. Um, uh, we have had um, owls obviously uh, repeatedly on the same properties. Um, some years they don't return. Um, and again, we've got a relatively small population um, so uh, um, it, it's, it's hard to know, but uh, we, we, we do typically properties that have been active have routine, routinely been active throughout the, the period. Okay. Um, is there any way people can help with an artificial borough project? You know, that is something that um, I'm going to uh, uh, breach with the county uh, and with uh, OSMP. Um, uh, I, it, it has never been discussed uh, in any of our meetings, uh, and I'm going to suggest that that might be, uh, you know, we might be trying to think about that. Um, right now, our, our prairie dogs are, are doing fairly well, um, and uh, 
but again, we have not had any increase in, in burring owl population. So uh, it's, it's a frustrating situation. Okay, the next question is, uh, where do the burrowing owls go when they migrate uh, in the winter? Uh, I, if, I don't know if you remember that um, um, map of uh, their, uh, the Western uh, species, uh, <coughs> subspecies uh, range map, um, but we've got a resident pair across the, the uh, Southwest uh, desert area uh, and they do not migrate. Uh, so they are, um, year round um, territorial residents. So I think what happens is our migratory um, uh, subspecies uh, comes, uh, or segment of the subspecies uh, migrates farther south than that. They probably actually go down into uh, Mexico. Um, and because in all likelihood, the resident burring owls in the Southwest, the US Southwest, probably our territorial year round. Um, so uh, I'm just assuming that our nesting pairs that migrate into the area in the spring uh, will migrate south of the resident uh, burrowing owls in the Southwest and go into Mexico. Okay. Um, is there any information on insect abundance or other prey on grasslands in the region? Uh, no, I, not to my knowledge. Um, um, and our, our burring owls do take a wide range of prey, just like most do. Uh, they are uh, prolific insect uh, eaters. They also will take, uh, you know, small rodents. Uh, uh, and uh, we've seen them eating snakes. Uh, you know, they, they have a wide range of prey. Uh, just about anything they can uh, get their, uh, their, their talons into, uh, they will consume. Uh, and, uh, but I don't think there have been any studies of insect populations on uh, any of the, the nesting uh, habitats. Uh, do you know whether the juveniles uh, return to their natal nest site for further breeding? Juveniles do return to their natal area, uh, which is typically the case for most migratory birds. Um, they, they do return to their natal area. Uh, and again, we talked about the fact that uh, juveniles um, as yearlings um, can reproduce uh, and those who attempt typically are not successful. Uh, but no, they're going to return to their natal area. And that's why one of the reasons why we were so surprised when we had that uh, uh, record high um, in 2018, uh, 31 fledged uh, 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 juveniles uh, on Boulder County Parks and Open Space Lands. Uh, and the next year we had uh, one pair returned and no, no fledglings survived. So what that tells us is more than likely the vast majority of that 31 uh, who fledged in uh, 2018 did not survive the winter. Um, do you see burrowing owls in urban areas? I'm sorry, I didn't hear. Do you see burrowing owls in urban areas? Um, you do, I wanna tell you a story. Um, the first burrowing owl I ever observed in my life in 1969 was in the median of I-95 between LA and San Diego. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it, it blew my mind. It was my life bird, my first, my first ever. And so <laughs> I, I notched that off and I remember it like it was yesterday. The following year, I got my second observation. It was on the Coca Cola. Uh, uh, Cocopelli Trail uh, in uh, a remote area of Utah. So uh, <laughs> yes, they will nest in uh, urban areas uh, uh, and, and successfully usually. Okay. Um, and a couple of people want to know how they can contact you. Um, I can give you my email address. It's very easy. It's sucas at comcast.net. Okay. Ucas at comcast.net. Okay, th so this isn't a question actually, but someone wanted to make a comment. Um, mm -hmm. Stephanie Rowe, Louisville is poised to allow development on a 400 acre tract of land in its southeast corner. The site has approximately 142 acres 
of prairie dog colonies on it. Last year, an environmental consulting firm recommended burrowing owl surveys. So far, these have not been done. And she would like you to contact Louisville. <laughs> uh huh. Okay. Without doing those surveys. <laughs> <laughs> I actually I saw a couple of emails on this topic uh, in, in recent weeks. Um, so uh, um, yes, um, and and again, we all know uh, the frustrations with prairie dog colonies on sm uh, small uh, enclosed parcels. Um, prairie dogs are an interesting uh, rodent species. Uh, they're an atypical rodent species. Uh, they're a male dominant species. Uh, they live in family groups called cotteries uh, with a single dominant male and multiple females. Uh, and uh, every year in the spring, the dominant male drives out any yearling males from the cottery and they go on walkabouts. Uh, a lot of times when we're uh, driving uh, the uh, uh, diagonal uh, between Longmont and Boulder, we'll see uh, prairie dog remains. And I, every time I see one, I think, oh, is that a poor yearling male that, you know, dad said, you know, hey, kid, get lost. And uh, but uh, yeah, it's an interesting uh, uh, breeding biology. And again, atypical of most rodents. Um, so here's a here's another question or comment from uh, what which would relate to all of you who I'm sure there's a lot of you that would like to be volunteers. It's from a volunteer who says, uh, well, a lot of us volunteers have remained faithful. It would be great to have more trained volunteers who would fill in when we cannot per perform our survey at various times. So maybe there is an opportunity here for some more. Mm -hmm. I, 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 I certainly hope so. And again, there's a, a, a finite number of properties where there are active uh, prairie dog um, colonies. Uh, and uh, most of them have been monitored by the same monitor year after year. Um, and of course, uh, as, as I stated earlier, um, the city uh, monitors all the staff. Um, and so, uh, you know, there isn't a volunteer opportunity there. But I, I will recommend that we um, uh, increase our volunteer uh, 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 community with regard to brewing owls and, uh, uh, and make sure that that happens. Okay, uh, another few more questions here. Do natural burrows fill in with soil? Uh, abandoned burrows? Uh, do eventually fill in. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. And m almost always um, the burrowing owls take over, you know, an abandoned burrow within a, a colony. Um, they don't drive out, you know, the, the resident family uh, or anything like that. Um, the uh, prairie dogs are fairly tolerant uh, of burrowing owls, uh, but uh, there can be tension between the two uh, organisms for sure. So here's another potential tension. Is there internet interaction between burrowing owls and bald eagles, since eagles hunt prairie dogs? Uh, oh, I suspect there probably are. Uh, yeah, um, it's funny, Boulder County Nature Association's winter raptor survey uh, back in um, the late 80s uh, was the first to document um, routine predation of prairie dogs by bald eagles. Uh, and uh, um, I've got a beautiful uh, image uh, of a, uh, a bald eagle on a prairie dog carcass uh, out near Bar Lake. But uh, yeah, they're certainly uh, both bald and golden eagles are going to be uh, um, preying on uh, prairie dogs. And the golden and bald eagles will take, they won't hesitate to take a burrowing owl either. Uh, so, you know, that's, uh, you know, one of the perils of. Uh, you know, living out there in the wild. Okay. Um, let's see, a couple of things here. Uh, getting a slight, little more political, but Sue, maybe you know this. Um, uh, how can we expand prairie dog colonies on county open space when they uh, designate large potential habitat as no prairie dog zones? Well, um, 
the no prairie dog zones are typically uh, in close proximity to um, uh, active ag properties. Um, and I, I agree, uh, there is frustration um, with uh, prairie dog activity, uh, both with the city and the county. Um, but uh, yeah, and again, prairie dog uh, breeding and feeding biology uh, is complex. And um, again, these were critters that, you know, 200 years ago were roaming tens of millions of acres of uh, prairie. Uh, and they would move, you know, they would move their colonies, you know, uh, as, uh, you know, forage was depleted in a certain area and they had that ability to move about. Uh, they don't have that anymore. And especially uh, prairie dogs that are trying to exist on an urban interface, uh, which is uh, uh, extraordinarily complicated. And I, as uh, uh, am the member of a uh, uh, now seven generation Boulder family, um, uh, I, I look at the city's uh, uh, OSMP's uh, um, issues, recent issues with uh, controlling prairie dogs on irrigated ag lands. Um, and, you know, if these are farmers, multi-generational farmers, uh, I certainly understand why they need, uh, you know, that uh, attention. Uh, but at the same time, I'm monitoring my golden eagle nest and watching every single prey delivery to the nest during the nestling phase, a prairie dog. And I think, okay, uh, you know, it, it, it's a tension within uh, uh, our system that is just extraordinarily challenging. Yeah. Uh, so there's another comment from Stephanie Rowe about the desire for the uh, burrowing owl survey, mm -hmm. Louisville. Uh, she put her email in the chat list here, which everybody can see. Uh, Stephanie Rowe zero zero at gmail.com. Um, I think for if, she, if you want more information or maybe you want to help her with mm -hmm. burrowing owl survey. And there was another question here about whether, if you know whether CU Boulder is making any attempts to conserve lands for the owls um, under their, that are under their ownership. I am not aware of, uh any burring owl activity on CU land at the moment. Um, I know there's extraordinary tension uh, with uh, the, the CU South issue uh, going on. And again, I'm not sure there are bur uh, not burring owls, pur there are prairie dogs out there or not. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, I, okay. I'm not aware of any CU issues. And uh, for the, you mentioned uh, a pair of burrowing owls that didn't migrate. Um, did they stay at their burrow all year? Um, okay, the ones I was talking about that didn't uh, migrate, they are a subset of the subspecies that migrates here. They are in that uh, uh, red zone uh, on the migration map uh, where they, they are sedentary. That segment of the population is sedentary. Uh, and then you have a subset of that same subspecies uh, that migrates. Uh, and uh, so all of our owls uh, here in Boulder County and in the state, I'm assuming, uh, are migratory birds um, that come in in the spring and leave in late summer uh, and uh, go south. Okay. Uh... Is there any data compare, comparing prairie dog, you know, uh, prairie dog colonies and burrows and prairie dogs, or excuse me, and burrowing owls and their uh, burrows at the same location so that you can, you know, is there any correlation between what's going on with the prairie dog populations and what's going on with the burrowing owl populations? Well, uh... I'll tell you, a, a property I have monitored since day one uh, for the county um, is in the uh, uh, east grassland buffer. Uh, and in my mind, it has one of the most viable prairie dog uh, colonies in the county. 
I've monitored it now every year since 2008. Uh, never seen a burrowing owl there every year. I think this is going to be the year. Uh, hasn't happened. Uh, so, uh, you know, and, and then again, we'll have burrowing owl activity in a marginal colony. Uh, so uh, it's, it, it's just hard to say. Obviously, if we had, you know, large uh, uh, active colonies, uh, we probably would have larger, uh, a larger population of burrowing owls, but they don't necessarily are, are attracted. And I, I can confess to that, uh, you know, to uh, larger colonies.